So in our previous video, we spent some time launching projectiles, a little bit like that. And we'd spent time looking at the acceleration of the object and the velocity of the object and the displacement of the object. We never did any calculations, any equations. And so in this video, we're going to do the equations. So it feels complicated, but it is remarkably straightforward. Now, remember, we have our object here, and we said that its acceleration never changes. Its acceleration is just gravity, right? So, we can say that the acceleration of our object with respect to time is equal to boop, negative gravity j. The acceleration is a constant negative 9.8 meters per second per section in the j direction. That is our acceleration function. Now, from our acceleration function, we can calculate our velocity function. So when it comes to our velocity function, let's launch it again, but let's show its velocity over the launch. So start, you can see the velocity changing over time. So we're going to come up with some equation that describes that velocity over time. Now, the velocity function we know is the integral of this function right here. And the integral of this, this is a constant, negative 9.8. The integral of negative 9.8 is negative 9.8 t j. And you might be thinking, wait, that's, that's not going to describe this vector because this vector here, um, it's made up of i and j components and this only has j components yes but i just integrated that which means there's a plus c on the end and it's that plus c that's going to be important now the plus c is a vector so we need to add some amount in the i component plus some amount in the j component. So this is what we're adding. Now, what are we adding? Well, let's find out what was happening at time zero. So let t equal zero. So at v zero, we have negative g zero j plus xi plus y j. And then the question becomes, what was our velocity at time zero, right? If what we, here's our velocity at time zero. What was our velocity at time zero? Well, we know that. Let's go back to time zero. That's our initial velocity, our initial yeet. And our initial velocity is some amount in the I component and some amount in the J component. And the way to figure out that amount in the I component is the magnitude of the yeet cos theta, the angle of the yeet. So we have the magnitude of the velocity, the initial velocity, cos theta I plus the magnitude of the velocity, if we want to know the amount in the J component, the magnitude of the velocity sine theta j. That is our initial velocity in the i component and in the j component. Now looking at the right hand side here, negative g zero j, that's just zero. So we don't have to deal with that at all, which means that we're left with xi plus yj. So Something i plus something j equals xi plus yj. That means that x equals this and y equals this. So that means that we can finish off now and we can say that our initial velo or sorry, our velocity equation over time is equal to negative gtj plus xi, which is this bit here, the magnitude of the velocity cos theta i plus the magnitude of the initial velocity sine theta j. This equation is very, very important. 
It's the equation of a projectile. This equation is very, very important. It's the velocity of a projectile over time. Uh, now, a couple of things to note about this equation. This is a number. This is a number. Because if I look at my particular equation right now down here, this 31.96, that's the amount in the I component right now, that's this bit here. This, uh, I think that number says 28.77 on the J component, that's that number right there. How do we know those numbers? Well, we just sub in our initial launch velocity, 43 in this particular case down here you can see you can see over there 43 and we sub in our initial launch angle in this case 42 sub it in there and there you get a number sub it in there and there you get a number what i've created is the i guess um the standard velocity function now we can tidy this up a little bit because we have a J component here and a J component here. So the real equation, if you're gonna like, I guess memorize an equation, is the velocity with respect to T equals the I component, the magnitude of the velocity, cause the initial launch angle I plus, and then we combine these into a single J component, plus negative GT plus the magnitude of V sine theta j. That j is on the outside of our brackets. This, this one right here, this is the velocity of a projectile over time. All right, not bad, not bad. Probably just a small amendment. I'll just put a vi uh, here and a vi here. Initial velocity, initial velocity. Okay. That's our acceleration function, that's our velocity function. What about a displacement function? So, same deal again, uh, the displacement function, which I'm gonna write as RT, some people would write XT, but I'm gonna avoid the use of the X here. That's gonna be equal to the integral of all of this. So, what is the integral of the magnitude of cos theta I? Now, this is where people get confused because they look at this and they want to integrate that um, as like sine or negative sine or something like that. But remember what I said earlier, this is a number. It's a number. We've got, uh, in the, our particular case, that's 31.96, okay? In more generally, it's a number represented by the initial velocity times cos of the initial launch angle. So the integral of this is just the number T I. So the magnitude of V cos theta, which is all a number T I. Okay, and then here, what do we have? We have the integral of negative 9.8 T. So the integral of negative 9.8 T is negative 9.8 T squared over 2 plus the integral of this here. And again, this is not a function. This is a number. In this case, 28 point something, I believe. Okay. And so we're going to do the same here. So magnitude of V sine theta T, T on the end, J. That is our displacement function with the addition of plus xi plus yj. Now, this one here, its initial position, its initial position is right there, zero, zero. So at time zero, if I sub t0 in here, and t0 in here, and t0 in here, and I say my initial position is 0, 0, then this xi and this yj, their initial position will also be 0, 0. So for a projectile launched from the origin, this is our displacement function. 
launched from the origin. So then, of course, the question becomes, okay, but if that's the equation for launched from the origin, what's the equation for not launched from the origin, launched from somewhere else? Uh, let's launch it um, from here and here, something like that. What is it, what, what would our equation be there? Well, we take exactly what we've got and we just add the initial position to the I component and to the J component. So that equation will look like R with respect to T equals this I component cos beta uh, T plus the initial uh, I, so the initial amount moved to the, in the I direction, plus this bit here, negative GT squared over two, plus the magnitude, the angle of launch, sorry, the magnitude of launch, angle of launch, uh, plus the initial Y coordinate, J. Okay, that, mm -mm. those ones here, one, two, and three, they're your most generalized, oh sorry, one, that no one and that one, they're your most generalized formulas. This one, this one, and this one, when you're launching from the origin, which is very often, uh, it's easier to do this one right here. Okay, these are your, uh, projectile motion equations. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of things with them.